Right, so good evening, everybody. You are welcome to day five of our boot camp. Today, I have two educators ready for you. They are going to be teaching you the divergence, the asset correlation, and ammonics. Now, I think the ammonics are going to be two, and we have about, I think, about six or seven of the ammonics. We have the shark, we have the crab, we have the deep crab, we have the gatli, we have the butterfly, we have the cipher. Yeah, different types of ammonics pattern. So I think out of those six, I guess, six, we are going to be doing just two, just for the fun of the boot camp because of time. So guys, you are welcome. And then the asset correlation, how EU and GU correlates, the correlation with the DXY, and how when they diverge, what to look out for. And then I think uh, the indices, US 30, US 100, S&P 500, popularly known as spools. And then Aussie, Kiwi, yeah, Aussie, Kiwi, AU, NU, uh, yeah, gold, silver, all, all of those good stuff. Bitcoin and Ethereum, how they correlate. I believe you are going to be taught all of that tonight. And then the ammonics, which I talked about. I think the two, two, the educator, I don't know which one is going to be teaching, but make sure you are here. Stay tuned. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you for joining. I believe you've been picking up so much value since on Monday. And without wasting so much time, uh, I'd like to pass it to my educator now, my next educator. My first educator for tonight, his name is Sam, popularly call him Sam Billions, trust me. <laughs> yeah, Sam Billions, I believe you are ready for me. Yes, yes. Sam. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm making you the host now. I'm the host. So I'm going to stop my music. And I'm going to stop my screen. And then just pretend I'm not here. Just pretend I'm not here. Enjoy. All right. Good evening, everyone. Please, if you can hear me, drop some eight. Drop some eight. If you can hear me clearly. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, so um, good evening, everyone, and um, I'm happy to be here, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. If you can hear me, if you can still hear me, please, can you just drop some it? If your music is too loud, let me know so I can reduce it. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Yeah, um, of course, I want to... I appreciate um, Coach Philip. <laughs> I want to thank him for this opportunity and, you know, has really, really helped me in my journey as a trader. And I also want to thank Coach Tony, especially. I want to thank him for everything. I can't start counting from now. That really helped me. And also to my friend, Fortman, uh, Mr. Charles, Nantos, and everybody. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. So um, tonight will be uh, I'll, we have many many uh, ammonics, like just like as uh, Coach Philip has mentioned. But then I will just be teaching because we can't looking at the time frame. We can't finish everything. So tonight I'll just be focusing on cipher and then um, the butterfly ammonics. So let's just go down into that. All right, my name is um, Samuel Olawi and um, popularly known as um, Sam Billion. So that's that. So now, please, if you can't hear me, just let me know so I can increase the volume louder. All right. So, harmonic trading refers to the idea that trends are harmonic phenomena, meaning they can be subdivided 
into smaller or larger waves that they predict price direction. Like when, when, when we're talking about the, the smaller or larger waves, just like saying the way we have our higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, that's what we are, we are referring to. That's what this one is referring to here. And the second point I have here is harmonics trading relies majorly on Fibonacci numbers. That is, we use our, we make use of our FIB majorly when we are dealing with harmonics. That's just, that's just it. We deal majorly with your Fibonacci numbers, then harmonics does not move price and it will never move price. So, and what I'm saying here is harmonics does not move price. It's just like, you just like, uh, Mr. Charles has explained yesterday and also my brother Fortman has also explained that he has spoken about structure, um, liquidity sweep, integration can do. Those are the main thing that we need to understand about price. We only use harmonics as a confluence. Confluence after understanding what the big boys are doing, that is the smart money. So it also enables our trader to identify the price level at which the trend of an asset can probably undergo a reversal. So that's, that's that. I will definitely go to the chart, but I just need to, we have, this, these are the types of, I pattern. we have the, uh, we have the bat, alternate bat, we have butterfly, got the cypher, shark, crab pattern, deep crab, I mean, so <coughs> for this boot camp, I'll just make your, like I said, the butterfly and the cypher harmonic pattern, so, okay, uh, before we dive into it, I just want to remind us, and just tell us this, that nothing happens until we decide to start, it lasts long as we want, and it doesn't end until we decide to stop. So everything we are doing here, once you decide it's your decision to start um, trading Forex. So as long as you want it, just keep pushing, don't stop. If you are just starting, since it is what you want, then don't stop. So we have Cypher harmonic pattern. We have the AB, which is um, 0.82 to 0.618 retracement of the XA swing leg, then BC, we have uh, extend to 1.13 and maximum of 1.14 of the AB swing leg. Then we have CB, retrace to um, 0.68. So I would go to the chart now so I can really explain and show us how these things, how we can draw it, yeah. All right. So the first thing when you want to draw an harmonics is you need to first get the two the, the two major points that is the two legs which is the X and the A the X and the A let me Tell you, show you what I'm saying. Say we have something like this. Or oh, let me just use price. Like if price has been going like this, we are still on the presentation page, sir. Oh, all right. I'm coming. Sorry. All right. So can we see the? Can we see my screen now? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. So now, the first thing is to get the X and the A when you are dealing with, just like when you're having your higher highs, higher lows, just like that. So you can, your X and A leg can be any point. It's not compulsory. You, you know, maybe you start you put it in one particular position that it must be this place. No, you can look at it. Once you see, most most times, um, harmonics pattern are just like, when you see M and W pattern on your chart, I will show us example. Once you see something like that, that looks like M or a W pattern, most likely we have harmonics in that zone. So the first thing is to get your X, which is here. 
Then your A leg. Please don't forget this, your X and A. It's very, very important. Now, the first one I'll be teaching us is the cipher, the cipher harmonic pattern. So for our cipher, after, after you've identified your the X, your uh, the first leg, that is X, and then A leg. So what you want to do is take out your fib and take it from point X down to your what to point A. Then you'll be using the to get your point B. You use your point X and your point A to get your point B. I'll repeat that again. You use your point X and your point A to get your point B. And that will be, the B position will be between your um, 0 0.382 and then 0 0.618. Either you can call it 3.82 or 61 or 61, 61.8. So after you've gotten that, so let's say this is your point B now. Let's put it here. Let's put... Please, if you, are, if, you are, if you get what I'm saying, drop drop some it so that I can know. If you are with me, drop some it in the chat. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. So now, after that, the next thing to do is to, let's say this is our point B now. This is our point B. Now, the next leg is the C leg. After you've gotten X, you've gotten A, you've gotten B. The next leg is what? To get your C leg. And that would, that would be by what? By taking your feet from point A to point B. That's an extension. Point A to point B. And then the point uh, D leg, the point C leg will be 1.14, will be between 1.14 and 1.13. So you already have that in your feed. You have your 1.14 and then your 1.13. That will be your, your C leg. It's very simple it's because we are just doing it. So my look, very, very simple. So like I said, Harmonics is just like an M pattern. Once you see it in your chart, just look at the any type of harmonic that we're most likely. Once you see anything like M, W, majorly is, is an harmonic forming out there. So after that, you want to now take, after you've gotten your C leg, this is your C leg here. Yeah. Now, after you've gotten your C leg, yeah, then we now want to get your the D leg, which will be at 0 0.768. Now, so to get that will be from this your swing low here yeah, to this swing I here, yeah, this point C here. Yeah. That's how you get your, your D leg, and it will be at 0 0.786. 0 0.786, which is this. So yeah over here this is then from here we'll have the market this is what we'll look out for so now you might want to ask that okay if you see this how will i get my entry how will i get my entry if, if i okay let's say i identify this how how it's very simple, just like uh, my brother has explained yesterday. If you understand structure, that was how it was aligned this way. If you understand structure very well, then I'm going to need to be very, it's just like an added advantage for you. Because the same thing, once you understand the 
the way price moves. Sorry, give me. Right. So here, yeah. what are we looking for here? Yeah. We're looking for reaccumulation in this zone. That is what price will come here. Like just give you coming with something like this, like this into that zone. Then you have a break of structure. Then this. Now, what are you going to have here? What are you going to be just like you, you, you were told we were told yesterday? We have a liquidity sweep in this zone. We have um we have a break of structure. The same thing, we have a break of structure over here. We have a break of structure and you have what your imbalance definitely will have imbalance here. This is what you will look out for in this zone to take this buy to confirm that okay, this is a complete cipher and we have a reaccumulation. Then you buy and you follow this trend. So this is how it looks like. Yeah. If you understand, please drop some it. Let me let me see. If you understand what I'm saying, please drop some it in the chat. And if you understand, say you understand. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Which which aspect is not clear? So I can just come over, come over it. Which aspect is not clear, Francisca? Now, <laughs> okay, okay. For the last time, I'll be, I'll come over. I definitely, you understand it now. You have to watch the video again to get it. But let me come over it again. All right. So All I right. said the first thing to do when you are looking, I will show you examples. You will understand now, but let me just come over it for the last time. The first thing to do is to get your X and the A point on your chart. On your chart. Once you, once you have the X point and the X and the A point, now after that, you take your FIB, your FIB from this zone here, this zone here, this zone here, to this point here, and you get, you put your B at zero and 0 0.382 and 0 0.618. That's the first thing. That is after you've gotten points X and A, the first, the next thing is to, to get your B. After B is your C. After C, then it should be your D, this last point here. This is it. So the main thing that you are just looking for is on your chart, just look for, once you see any M pattern, locate X, locate point A, locate point. After that, after your, you measure your X and A to get your B, then A, B, you get your C, then X, this point X to then point A, we give you this, this zone here. So that's for, that's for Cypher. That's for Cypher. Please, you have to catch up with the video if you don't understand after because of time we still have another person coming up so this is the sci-fi here that we have here 
So this is what we call, this is uh, for the bullish trend. This is the bullish cipher, this one. For the bullish trend, once you see this, this indicates that we are buying. And the same thing is applicable when you when you are looking for the bearish trend. So let me just, you see that it's the same thing, sorry. You can see this is the opposite. Let me just, I will, I will explain, but I just want to show you that it's, it's the same thing, either up or down. So whatever you are looking at, looking at at the top, is still the same thing that you are looking for at the bottom. So let's go to the bearish, the bearish, So like I said, now, if you are with me, please, what, what will be the first thing? What will be the first thing? Okay, question. We look at X and A on the chat. Okay, follow me and you get you get it now. Chibuzo and then got time. You get it now. Follow me. We are, we are about to do the, the bearish trend. Just follow me now. Follow me now. So the first thing is your X and what? Your A. Your X and your A. A point. This is X. And A. All right, if you get it to this level, drop some A's in the, uh, eight in the chat. If you get it to this level, the first point X and A, if you get it to this point, all right, all right. So the next thing is to get your point B. After you've gotten your, uh, your the X and A, the next thing is your point B. So you take it from, from point X to point A to get your point B. So, and I told you that point B is all, always at 0 0.618 and 3.82 zone. That's where we, are, we have our point B for cipher, 0 point, then this. That's how you get your B. You get your B, X, A, then B. X, A, then B. It will be in between these two. X, A, then B. So this is our B here. This is our B. Then, like I told you that Cypher has um, extension. Cypher has extension. So what will be the next thing is to get our point C, X, A, B, then C. So like this, to this, from your A to your B, you will get your C. Again, X, A, B, from your X to your A, you will get your B. From your A to B, you will get your C. So to get point C, and point C is an extension, so it will be located at the 1.14 we located at this zone and um, this zone this that would be your c i told you x a b then c a to b we give you c a to B will give you C. So this is our point C. This is our point C here. Yeah? Then to get your D, it will be from this point X, this swing I here, yeah, to this swing low here. Yeah? And it will be at 0 0.786.
this this guy. This year. 0.786. This is a complete cipher for the bearish move. Down. What are we what are we going to look out for here in this zone? Just like I explained the other time. The same thing you, you look out for. Price is coming in a bullish trend, counter trend, break of structure, mitigation, then down. So if you understand to this level, please drop some eights. Yeah, from A to C, from X, from X, not from A, from X to C, this swing I to this swing low, swing I to swing low, we give you point D, swing I to swing low, we give you point D. This is point D. From X to this C, we give you point, point D. All right, all right. So that's that. And let me just show you some examples in this chat. So if you understand, if you understand me, drop some eights in the chat, please. All right, thank you. So let's move to the next one. I will show you examples in the chart all together. Let's move to the next one. So uh, because of our time, let's move to the next one. So let's go to the butterfly, the butterfly um, pattern, the butterfly among pattern. So can someone tell me what's the next first thing to do when you want to do uh, like draw an harmonics? What's the first thing? What's the first thing to do? Which legs are we going to get? All right. X A. X A. Yeah. Thank you. So the first thing is X A. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So this is X here. Yeah. And then what? Hey, please, can you meet yourselves? Thank you. All right. So after X, A, what's the next point we are going to get? What's the next point? Drop it in the chat if you know. What's the next point after X and A? After you've identified X, A, what's the next point? All right, B, thank you. So now for this one, for butterfly, it's very different. Not that different, it's just the FIB level. Like I said, when you are dealing with harmonics, we will make use of the FIB numbers majorly. So for this, this one, we make use of, um, the B will be 0 0.78. If you remember 0 0.78 for, for Cypher, 0 0.78 for Cypher was um, the D leg. So for this one now, 0 0.78 is our B. 0 0.78 is our B. Yeah. Like I said, X, A, then what, then B. X, A, then what, then B. So the next thing to do is what, after B, what's the next leg? Drop it in the chat, what's the next leg after B? We are following C, thank you, thank you. So to get our C, how are we going to measure to get C, to get C it from what? Is it from X to A or to or A to B? All right, A to B, thank you. All right, A to B. And for this one, it's different from Cypher. Like I said, this is another type entirely. So it will be between um, 0 0.382 and 0 0.886. 0 0.382 and 0 0.886. 0 0.382 and 0 0.886 to get our C. So 
Can I just put it here? Let's say here. This is our C. This is our C. Let me recap. From X to A, you get your B. From A to B, you get your C. Now, for this one, to get this one also has extension. To get the extension, it will be from now. You can see the other time I told you that it's from the swing low to the swing high. Now, this one is what from swing low to swing high, which is A. C is not the swing high here. A is the swing high here. So from X to A. So that will be our measurement, and the extension will be it will be at um one point. 1.272 and 1.618. They have that. Okay, yeah, I have it there. Okay, I'll come, come, come again. I'll repeat myself. Now, I said the first thing is get your X to A. X to A is the first point. X to A, if you understand, David, if you understand, drop it. The first point is X to A. If you can hear me. So after you've gotten your X to A, the next point is what? To get your to get your B. To get your B. And to get your B, it will be from this X, take your feet from this point X to this point A to get your B. That is how you can get your B. So, and I said your B is at 0 0.786 FIB. 0 0.786, 0 0.786 FIB. Yeah, this is 0 0.786. This is your B. Then to get your C, you still do the same thing. This is a bullish butterfly, bullish, bullish, not bearish. This is bullish. This is bullish, bullish butterfly. This is bullish. All right, so we have X to, we've gotten your B, then to get your C, you have measure A to B, you get your C. Then to get the extension, which is the D leg for entry. Now, it will be your measurement from X to this point A, this swing low here, to this swing guy here. The difference between this and that of Cypher is to get your D, you measure point X to point C. But for this one, it is from point X to point A. Yeah. So just draw the line. Let's say this is to this zone here. Then from here up. So this is this is for bullish. This is bullish butterfly. This is bullish butterfly. And just like I said the other time, now to get C is A to B. You measure A to B at uh, 0 0.382, 0 0.382 and 0 0.886 to get your C. I hope I've answered your question. To get your C, A to B, it is just like following the leg, like X, A will give you B, A, B will give you C, then to get D, X, A will give you D. Do you understand? All right, thank you. So now, at this zone here, just like the same thing, I will show you, because you cannot, especially for, uh, for butterfly, you cannot just enter like that, because if you enter like that, sorry, Sorry, if you enter like that, the account will bleed. Sorry. But you have to wait for confirmation. Confirmation. Wait for this reaccumulation. Just like uh, Mr. Charles explained yesterday, this clear brick of structure. I have this. You have price coming, series of lower high, lower low, 
lower high, lower low, and then a break of structure. And then a break of structure, then entry here. And then entry here. We'll send you the, the formulas, don't worry. Let's just, just get it first. Once you get it, don't worry, you have the formula on how to do it by yourself. So this will be your entry and then and you are done. So just like I did the other time, the opposite is the same thing. You can see for, this is for bullish, for bearish is the same procedure. Sorry. You can see. This is bullish. They are seeing it. This is bullish. This is bullish. And for bearish, it's still the same thing. So there is nothing new there. It's just, just once you understand how to use your feet very well, you will be able to use. Um, yeah. So this is it for, um, for, for the bearish. For the bearish, just the same thing. X to A, let me remove this so you can get it. For the bearish is the same thing. The first thing is X to A first. This is X to A first. Then you go to B, X to A will give you B. X to A will give you B. That is at 0 0.786 zone. Then A to B, we give you C, very simple. You just like your alpha alphabet. You cannot, before you get to C, before you get to C, you start from A, B, C. So just put it in your mind, okay, after you've gotten your X, A point, okay, then now the next thing is after A, I need A, you, I need B. You cannot go to C. Before, then after A, you have B. So after A, what's your B? Measure X, to A, you get to your B, 0 0.67, 0 0.786 zone. Then to get to your C, you have X to B, we give you this point C. Now to get your D, the only difference between this and that of um, Cypher is C, as at that time, was the swing I. Then was the swing, yeah, for this one, was the swing low then, because we are dealing with um, bearish now. So C was the swing low there, but now it is A that is the swing low for you. So this guy from this X to this A, we give you this extension here. This extension here, and that is at 1.1, 1.618 and this. So that is how we, we get this. And then you wait for the same thing in this zone to just sell down. So if you understand, please drop some eights. So we'll go to the chat and I will show you so that the next person will come up. If you understand, drop some minutes. If you understand, or if you have questions, drop drop some eight. If you understand, drop some eight so we can go to the chat and I will show you how it works. All right, all right. So let's go to the chat. It's very simple. Don't don't be scared. It's very very simple. Just like back of your hand. Very simple. Um. So let's see for this. Okay, you, you can all see here. Let me let me put this out first. Now we can guess what do we have here? If you honest, if you know what we what, what we have here, drop it in the chat. Which kind of harmonic pattern do we have here? Yeah, which butterfly is it bullish or bearish? Bearish. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the spirit. 
That's the spirit. Drop some eight. Drop some eight. You are getting, you can see it now. Yeah. Awesome. 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 So now, before now, look at looking looking at this guy here. You remember you were taught risk management yesterday. And looking at this chart here, you cannot just enter here because if you look at the side, there's no place where you can um really, really um put your SL or put anything because you cannot just enter here. If you say you want to enter here and price keep kept on going, 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 then you are you 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 blow your account. But like I said, what you are going to wait for is this price is coming in a bullish trend a bullish trend at the break of structure a mitigation then down so now what you're going to do here now we might not be able to go because this this is far um i don't know let's see if we can so just check this that's why i just put this zoom here what you are doing here is you are checking like you are going deeper. You want to see what is inside. What is inside this this guy to give me my entry? After you've seen the the leg, after you've seen the leg, let's see if we can go down. If we can still get the information there, I don't know. But let's let's go. Okay, so from here, although you might not have gotten entry, but then you can see if you check lower time frame, at least you might still see and this, this is if I go lower than this, you might not get the play, but then it's fine. It's not every time you get to the market, but you can see just like we taught yesterday. This is what uh, this is uh this is your higher I higher low, higher I, higher low. I, I, we have the break of structure over here. Why the break of structure here? Why the break of structure? So after the break of structure, what are you looking for? You look out for the candle that swept, that capture liquidity. You can see, swept this guy here. Now, what are what, what was the next thing you look out for? Probably imbalance, you know, or the candidate is in the drawdown. And you can see that from this zone here, or this this zone is a balanced price action. But we have a little imbalance here. We might not have we not have gotten entry, but seeing it is, is very, very good. If you understand what I'm saying, drop some it. If you understand what I'm explaining, drop some it in the chat. All right. So now we can see that, like Mr. Charles explained yesterday, if you have watched the video on YouTube, if you have not, subscribe on the YouTube and watch the video. Check it on the YouTube. The video is there for free. You are not paying. So this is imbalance here. We we'll have been waiting for price to come back here, but price did not come back, which is at least it happened, which is fine. So we we'll have been waiting for this. This is what, even if I was on chat, this is what I would have been waiting for after this break. Then I will be waiting for this uh, mitigation or to, to fill this imbalance, then to go down. So that's that's what I'll be waiting for. So that's that for this cipher. I mean for butterfly. And like I said, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. There's nothing different. Let's turn the chart upside down so you can see that what is up is the same thing as what we have below. So you can see it's the same thing here. Can you see? Up or down, depends on how you are seeing it. This is it. If you understand, drop some eight. So we'll go to the next one. That's a butterfly. That's a butterfly. So let's go to, um, let's see if we can see Cypher.
So which one is this? All right, all right. You guys are correct. So now you can see what I'm, I'm saying here. Look at what happened here. I think I have to use my PowerPoint. Look at this beautiful distribution that happened here. So price coming. Uh, Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. We had a break of structure here, but there was no clear imbalance here for me, but price gave a break of structure, mitigation happened. Yeah, let me see so I can. So, Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. We had a break of structure here. Yeah. So this might be your first entry, but then price came, this gave you this. We still came, swept this eye. Then now after this break, this major break of structure here, yeah. price came up swept all these guys. This trend line here that we have, you can see what happened. Then price finally broke this guy here. And you can see we have a tiny imbalance here. I see what happened here. Swept these guys here. Swept these guys here. Then mitigation. So this might might have been your entry. But then you might you can also take your entry here. Depends on you. So you can also take your. But for me, I love to see liquidity sweep and the clear imbalance before I take my entry. So that's that about that. So um, I'm trying to see if I can get cipher. I have one on Yeah. Which which one is this? Which harmonic pattern is this? Hello, can you hear me? If you can hear me, drop some eight. Cypher, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, bullish cypher, yeah. So, now we've gotten it. And just like I said, what I'm going to do here, you the same thing you wait for here. That's what, and that's what exactly happened. You wait for reaccumulation in this zone here. So if you look at it, this is on daily time frame though. If you scale down, but we can still see it clearly here. Can still see it clearly here. 
yeah this is bullish cipher so price was coming this is um a lower high a lower low a lower high a lower low low high lower low we had a break of structure A lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high. We had a lower low, a lower high. A break of structure happened here, but price swept these guys. But let's consider this. This is a break of structure for me. I'm on this chart. This is where I'll be considering as a break of structure, which happened. And price left this huge imbalance here. Have this imbalance here and my brother explained something to you about internal liquidity this is an internal liquidity here you can see that price swept that internal liquidity and we have this imbalance here so price just stabbed the open of that imbalance and you know swept this internal liquidity but this is daily time frame like i said if you check this guy here in this zone here, if you scale down, just go down to your chart and, you know, just check it very well. So you see the perfect entry there. So by the break of structure, we have this imbalance. We have this internal liquidity above this imbalance and price just swept this internal liquidity, you know, tab a little and then you know, look at the results. This was DXY. Look at the results. So now the advantage of this um, ammonics is once you see it on higher time frame, most especially, although it happens on any time frame, but if you see it on like daily, weekly, monthly, man, it's always like it moves very, very well. You can see, look at it from here. Look at look at our market. You can see. Look at the results. You can see the results. From this one happened around, um, it's like 2004, 12th May. So look at the results. So it was very, very massive. So, so that will be that. And so I just want to, yeah. okay. So lastly, before I go for my next, Let's get up, comes up. I just wanted to know that. If you can see my screen, drop some hits in the chat. If you can see my screen, drop some hits. If you are still with me, drop some hits. Drop some hits. Right, thank you. So I just want to tell you that um, even though you don't understand what I've been saying since, what I'll say it is keep working. Don't forget to pray. It will get better with time. I'll repeat that again. Keep working. Don't forget to pray. It will get better with time. Like time is what you just need to give yourself. You understand it. If I can know it, you can also know it. So with that, thank you and uh, God bless. Coach. Coach, coach, are you there?
Yes, good. Three to one. Okay, so that will be all from me tonight. And I want to appreciate you for joining and for hopping on. Thank you. And just take your time, watch the video to be uploaded on YouTube. So watch the video and you will definitely understand everything. Thank you and God bless. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I'm here now. I'm here now. Whoa. All right, please make me the host. Good. I'm done here, yeah. sir. Yeah, make me the host. Make me All the right. host. All right, guys. So let me quickly attend to the first question. So the first question is, I believe my second educator is ready. So let me quickly attend to the first the questions here before I pass it on to the next host. He says, please, how do I know which one to use between the two? How do I know which one to use between the, uh, the butterfly and then the cipher? Now, the problem is you necessarily do not know which one to, uh, should I say to use? Because market is not going to say I'm butterfly. But when you do your calculation, you are going to actually be able to know that, oh, this is a cipher leg that is forming, or this is a shark. Like I said, there are six of them. So the only one you thought is two. Of course, the only one we said we are going to go over is two of them. So you necessarily don't know. But when you do your calculation on the charts, when you identify your leg X, your leg A, your leg B, your leg C, and your leg D, then you can then know that oh this is actually a butterfly or this is a cipher all right so the next question says sir when it's bullish my x will start from down or up all right when it is bullish your leg x a when it is bullish that you're looking for like let's say like this harmonics now i believe this is the cipher harmonics pattern. This is CHFJPY, like you can see currently, right? And this is a bearish cipher. So your leg X is going to start from up. So that means you are just going to reverse it. Um, you are going to reverse it. So your leg X is going to be from below. So now this calculation is simple. Um, the same thing, the same way it's plotted it is the same way you plot it. So you calculate from your leg X to your leg A to get your leg B, to get your B leg, which is between, and then your B leg, like you said, of course, I believe you understand. So just your leg X will be down A, B, C, and then your leg D. And then you can get your cipher harmonic pattern or your butterfly harmonic pattern or any pattern at all that you know. Okay, this person says still a bit confusing. Well, yeah, harmonics can be very, very, it's mathematics. A lot of people don't like mathematics. So, but then it's simple. It's actually easy, trust me. All right, which other question, please? How do I know which one to use between the two? Okay, like I said, you necessarily don't know which one to use. You just have to speculate if the one the one you are using. Okay, this was he said, shouldn't we sleep on this tonight? <sighs> we still have time and we normally round up by 11 past 11. And I really want us to be done with the boot camp by let's say tomorrow. So please. Uh your time really what is what we appreciate yeah thank you even if i was lost because this is the first class i'm attending oh mr david you're welcome you can catch up on the other recordings on the youtube all right using this pattern is it that important well most people don't really like harmonics all right it's just it's just like we say is an extra confluence is an edge for you. Like this now, if you notice this chart, I have the harmonics on this chart, and then I have the smart money on this chart. Like you can see, this is my institutional candle here that caused that break of structure to the downside. It came back to close their position out, and then it's also dropping again. So 
that's confluence one and then the harmonics pattern then give me a better confluence to know that okay really this guy is wants to drop now if you trade uh what is it called now support and resistance you can see that this is some kind of resistance level that formed here if you trade with theory <laughs> if you trade wave of course you can see that this is some kind of wave that formed here uh let me see well, don't let me get into all of that. So all the things just give you an extra confluence. So it's not necessarily saying is it that important or yeah, it's just extra confluence for you. If you only trade harmonics, you are good. If you only trade smart money, you are good. If you trade resistance and support, well, you are good. If you trade wave theory, you are also still good. That's the earliest way. You are good. Any one at all. But all of them, if you know all of them, it gives you an extra confluence. Like for me, for instance, now the EU trade we took. Okay, I think I'm taking so much time now. The EU trade we took was not just based on smart money alone. It was based on so many fundamentals, so many technical, so many sentimental analysis. We had to go from the wave theory to the divergence, which we're going to be learning now, to the bond yields, all of those things. Like I said, taste deep. A little learning is a dangerous thing. So I'm going to stop sharing now. And then I'm going to make Emmanuel. Our next educator's name is Emmanuel. So I'm going to be making Emmanuel the host. But first, I want to make sure I mute everybody. Right. So Emmanuel, are you ready for me? Yes, yes, coach. I am. All right, I see you. All right, so made you the host now so you are free do your thing just pretend i am not here um all right good evening everybody again my name is emmanuel i will be i do not intend to take so much of your time tonight uh we're going to be looking at uh, let me share my screen we're going to be looking at asset correlation and divergence. Um, a big shout out to our grandmaster, our coach, Coach T. Um, you the call? My coach, my coach, Coach Philip. Uh, I really am grateful to God for this privilege. It's, a, it's been a blessing so far. Uh, now, I want to say something that when um, there's this statement that Coach Tony used to say that multiple smart money concepts can help us to uh, identify or can increase our probabilities. High probability trade comes from multiple smart money concepts. Several concepts I've been discussing. Um, I'm sorry, can we hear me clearly? And I hope my music is not too much. If you can hear me, please, can you drop a sevens? Okay. Okay. Okay, please, you can let me know if my music is too loud. Okay, so let me continue. So <laughs> high probability trade ideas come from multiple smart money concepts. We have been looking at several concepts, smart money concepts, starting from um, trading ranges, um, concept of liquidity, mitigation theory, uh, and all of that. Tonight we started with the harmonic um, pattern theory, and we look at two harmonic patterns. Um, this other concept um, is a powerful tool because most times there is the. Um, okay, before I continue, I want to just chip in something for those of us that are having challenge understanding the harmonics that my brother was sharing the other time. Um, I wanted to really sit down and understand internal and external liquidity 
that um, my brother um, Fortman discussed with us two days ago, you would notice, just sit down and study your chart. Harmonic pattern is usually formed um, or framed behind internal liquidity. Usually I look at it as <clears throat> smart money have an unfinished business. And so you will see that most times, especially looking at the two patterns we discussed tonight, the leg B is an internal liquidity that price probably they just left it there to induce more liquidity in the market. And I want to let us know that it is liquidity that moves this market. Liquidity moves the market. Can you repeat that after me? If you just type it in the chat, but liquidity moves the market. Price is moved by liquidity. So many a times when um, smart money forgets to sweep a particular area of liquidity and they create a new range or a failed range, they will usually move and come back. And that's what we give birth to harmonic pattern. That being said, let's move on to asset correlation and divergence. What is asset correlation? What is asset correlation? I'll just do it, um, a little slide um, and then we'll jump into the chart. What is asset correlation? Asset correlation is a measure of how an asset class moves in comparison to another asset class. Now, we know that we have several asset classes. We have several assets in the market. And um, when we are looking at um, correlation, you know, from the word correlation, it means you are trying to compare the relationship between assets. For instance, you have the cable and the fiber, the e, um, that is the GU, GDP USD, and the Euro USD. You have the Aussie Kiwi, that's the AUD USD, and the, and the NZD USD. Um, these assets have a relationship, meaning that they move together most often, not 100%. And so when you have assets that move in the same direction, they are considered to be positively correlated. And when they move in opposite direction, that's inverse. So that means they are negatively correlated. These are assets that have correlation. They can they move together most often. Euro USD, GPP USD, AUD USD, NCD USD, XA USD. This is gold. And then you have your silver, then you have your indices, which is the US 30, the Jones, US 100, the NASDAQ the S&P 500, the S&P 500. And then you have your Bitcoin and you have your Ethereum. Okay. Um, these asset classes are all paired with the dollar. And so the, each individual asset class will have an inverse correlation, meaning that when the count is bullish, it means the dollar is bearish. And when the pound is bearish, it means that the dollar is bullish. Are we following me? Please, can you drop some sevens in the chat box if you are with me? I need to know that I'm interacting with you guys. Please drop some eights if you are following me. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So. Now, what is divergence? Divergence is simply a crack in correlation between two correlating assets at a given time. Now, imagine a couple, a husband and a wife moving together, and then they have their hands held together. They're supposed to be going in the same direction. And all of a sudden, at a particular point in time, there is a crack in the relationship. They begin to have opposites views and perspectives they are against each other maybe for a period of time and after a while they come back again that's what divergence simply means so if eu and gu are supposed to be moving together it means that when the euro usd is bearish okay wow 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 uh, still on the first slide. Oh, please. Okay. 
Let me just say like this. Can we see this now? Can we see this next slide correlated assets? Can we see that now? Okay. So these are examples of assets that are correlated. They move like husband and wife. Don't mind my teaching. I like to <laughs> use funny illustrations so we can drive home the point. So uh, the Euro USD and the GDP USD, they are correlated. It means they move together. They move together most often, not all the times, like 80 to 90% of the time. So in Euro USD, when you look at the Euro USD chart and it's buying, most of the time, if you go and check the GDP USD, it will also be buying. So they are correlated together. The same thing goes for this, um, the others, AUD, USD, NZD, USD, then you have your gold, you have your silver, the gold is XAUUSD, the silver is XAGUSD. And then the same thing goes for these three guys, we refer to them as the indices. So the Dow Jones, which is the US 30, the NASDAQ, which is the US 100, the S&P, which is the uh, S&P 500 schools, then you have your BTC USD, and then you have your Ethereum USD. So all these pairs of assets, they are correlated. They have a good correlation. We can, we can compare them. Don't forget, asset correlation has to do with, permit me to go to that first slide again. Asset correlation has to do with uh, looking at pairs that move together, you are comparing them together. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Now, I was saying that when you look at each of these assets, um, you see that they are they are measured against the US dollars. They are measured against the US dollars. Okay, so you have your, uh, when the pounds is buying, it means the US dollars is selling. And when the US dollars is selling, it means the pounds is buying. Same goes for the euro, same goes for the Aussie dollar, same goes for the NZD, same goes for gold, silver, um, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. I will follow you with this. I will follow you with this. I will follow you with this. Okay, so let's move on. Now, so because each of them have an inverse correlation with the US dollar. So it means that when you are seeing a Euro USD chart and you are seeing that it is bullish, the implication of that is that on the other side of the economy, the US dollar is bearish. Okay, so yes. So do we understand that? Do we understand that? Do we understand that? Okay, so now the name given to, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the responses. Thank you very much. The name given to a situation where um, two asset classes that are supposed to be moving together now have a crack in that correlation, meaning that at a particular point in time, the Euro USD is buying, and we expect the GDP USD to also be buying. And then all of a sudden, we discover that both of them are moving in different directions. What we have in such situation is what is called divergence. When two asset class, correlated asset class that are supposed to be moving together, suddenly have uh, direction change. Okay, so now the divergence between correlated assets. This is very important. I want you to take note of this second point. It's very, very important because I am. I want to tell you that smart money brings in. If you could still remember, um, two days ago we were talking about the difference between liquidity and volatility, and um. 
for those of you that you remember, we, we learned that the New York session is the most volatile, meaning that you have a lot of volume that is coming into that session. Right? Now, how do you know when smart money is buying a particular asset? How do you know when smart money is actually selling a particular asset? Heavy so. Okay, so now this tool is a powerful tool that will help you to know that, oh, I can see the footprint of smart money. Okay, so now, Okay, can we hear me now? I'm allowed enough now. Mr. Daniel, am I loud enough now? Okay, thank you very much. Now, a divergence between correlated assets indicates two things. Two things. I need to take note of this. Whenever you spot a divergence, it means there is an indication of a sign of strength for a particular asset or a sign of weakness. And uh, that's where the name relative strength analysis derives from. Relative strength analysis. Now, when a particular asset is showing sign of strength, you don't want to be selling that asset because they are telling you that smart money is buying this particular asset heavily. Or when a particular asset is showing sign of weakness you don't want to be buying a such scenario because smart money is heavily shorting that asset so now imagine when smart money is heavily long on an asset and you want to bring in your one thousand dollars ten thousand dollars to be selling please what is going to happen at the end of the day can you give me a reply what will happen at the end of the day when smart money is heavily buying an asset and you want to be shorting that same asset Hello, can we hear me? Let's make this call. That, oh, you'll be liquidated. Thank you. Yeah, they will be liquidated. So your money will become the foil with which they will move. All right. So now, what is a sign of weakness? How do we identify a sign of weakness? A sign of weakness for an asset indicates that smart money is shorting that asset class much more heavy. Number two, you identify sign of weakness by comparing highs. You know, during our market structure, we know we have higher highs and lower lows. Okay, so you compare the highs of correlating assets to be able to know or determine a sign of weakness. Now, the asset indicating sign of weakness will be making a lower high, while its correlating asset will be making a higher high. Don't worry, let's just take this note and we'll look at chart examples. Um, I know some of us are jotting. I want us to really rush through this theory aspect so that we can jump on the chart of examples. Please permit me to move on. This time to move on. Um, sign of strength. So the sign of strength indicates that smart money is buying an asset more heavy. How do you identify sign of strength? The asset indicating sign of strength will be making a higher low, while the other one will be making a low one. So that one that is making a higher low tells you that ooh, this is the one these guys interested in much more so that is the one you want to be aligning yourself with that is the one you want to be looking at for your other smart money concepts like the breaker structure your checklist and all of that let's move on let's move on uh i'm sorry i have to go through all this theory so fast i really want us to see um these things in pictorial view so now how do we anticipate a divergence this is also very, very important. You know, you cannot determine the extent to which an expansion will be because there are four market phases. There are four market phases. We have the expansion, 
you have the retracement, you have consolidation, and uh, you have the reversal. But the major ones, you have the, your, your expansion. Your expansion leads to a new range. If you still remember the topic, the discussion on range, a range, what is a range? A range is the information to data points in the market. Do you remember? Okay, when a new high is formed, that is an expansion. After a new high is formed in a bullish market, what happens is that we're going to see a retracement. So you have the expansion, you have the retracement. How do you know when a retracement is to end? This tool of divergence here can help you to determine, not in more cases, but most often you will see this catalyst of market, where at the end of a pullback, you're going to see a divergence, especially between correlated assets. Okay, okay. So the divergence can be stopped at the end of a pullback or an expansion, but most importantly at the end of a pullback. We can anticipate a divergence between correlated assets when we notice prices in a pullback. So this is how you anticipate it. You have been able to identify your range, your current trading range. Maybe you are been able to identify your lower high and your lower low, or you've been able to identify your higher high and your higher low, and then you are anticipating a pullback. You've been able to identify your, your internal liquidity, or probably there is an ammonic pattern. Now, following up with the pullback, you can also add the knowledge of the divergence to knowing in whether, oh, this pullback is coming to an end, this guy is ready to move for another expansion. Okay. And for those of us that want to trade the pullback of an expansion, it can also come in handy. It can also come in handy. Special, special disclaimer. <laughs> you, you must know that we don't just trade divergence in isolation. So it is like a confluence to something that, um, you know, it, it gives us a sign. You, know, you don't just work with signs alone. It, gives, it just gives us a sign that something is taking place, something is happening. And because of what we have seen that is happening, let's begin to put all our tools together to be able to take a decision, right? Are we with me? Um, let's go on to some chart examples. Um, let's go on to some chart examples. And I'll teach us how to set up our trading view chart to identify their budgets. So let's look at some chart examples. Okay, now look at this chart example very well. The, I have two assets um, overlaid on each other and I'm using them in um, having two different panes. Uh, the top asset is the US dollar and then the one below is the GDP USD. Okay. Now, one thing you need to note is that in using uh, divergence as a tool, we use the line chart, use the line chart. Now, when you look at this point here and this point here, here, you see that the EUUSD made a higher high and the GDP USD made a, what, a lower high. This is an indication that um, smart money is ready to go heavily short or much more heavily shot on this guy, because this is the one that is showing the sign of weakness. It failed to create a higher high when its counterpart was making a higher high. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Remember, EURUSD and GBPUSD are supposed to be moving together. EURUSD and GBPUSD are supposed to be moving together. Okay, why? Because they are correlated assets. Now, that means that if Euro USD is giving you a higher high, okay, it means you we are supposed to be seeing a higher high too on the GBP US. But look at what happened. There is a failure, there is a crack in correlation there. Can you see the arrows I'm putting there? Can you see the arrows I'm putting there? You see that on this guy, this one went higher, but this one, the one, this one went lower. 
Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Okay, can I move on? Can I move on? Okay, um, somebody is saying no. Um, have we taken our time to watch the video on market structure and um, the, the video on range, trading range? Have we all taken our time to study this session? Do we understand what we mean by a higher high and a lower high? Okay, when you look at this chart above here that is in blue, that is the Euro USD. Just look at this place that I'm putting the arrow and compare it with the GDP USD below. At this period of time, what can we notice? What can we notice between both of them? What can we notice? This is the Euro USD in blue, and this is the GBP USD in pink. What can we notice? Okay, please permit me to do, just do some drawing. So um, I can see that some of us are not really following. So permit me to do this. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we see my browser? Can we see my browser? Can we see my browser? Can we see this blank? screen i need to do something quickly can we see this blank screen please can we see this blank screen can we see this screen please okay 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 so yeah i need to quickly explain if we get this it will be easy for us to spot okay now we want to we want to check an example of a sign of weakness. So this is a low high, a higher high, okay? And then we now notice that uh, the second asset that they're supposed to be making the same, they're supposed to be giving out the same structure. Suddenly, so fails. Okay. Do we understand this picture, please? Let us take this as EU, and let us take this as, a, as EU. I want us to really, really get it and at the same time get it time to drive it. Okay, do we understand this now? This is a sign of weakness. A sign of weakness. This one here failed to go higher when its counterpart went higher. Do we understand this now? Do we understand this now? Drop some eights if you understand this now. This is what we call a sign of weakness. Drop some eights if you understand this picture now. Maybe you might want to draw it somewhere. It doesn't have to be between Euro USD and GDP USD. It can be between any of the correlated assets. But I'll just be using these two as examples. Okay, so can I move on, please? This is a sign of weakness. 
Now let me show the sign of let me show the sign of strength. So at the particular point in time, we now notice that. assets that are supposed to be moving together they have to crack in correlation comparing their loads please what can we notice here let us say that this is eu and let us take this as g Can somebody explain to me what is going on here, please? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Can somebody tell me what is going on here? What can you notice? Good, 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 good. Good. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Good. Good. Good, exactly, 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 exactly. EU is showing a what a sign of strength. It means that we are supposed to be buying these because smart money is buying this one more heavily than G. Over here, smart money is selling this one heavily more than the one above. So this is a sign of strength. This setup is a sign of weakness. You sell sign of weakness and you buy sign of strength. Can I put that down? We do what? We do what? Sell sign of what? Of weakness and do what? Okay. All right. Do we understand? Do we understand this? Do we understand this? I need to show us how this thing looks like on the chart. If you want me to go on to some live chat example, drop some sevens, 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 some sevens. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so first and foremost, this is how you set up. There are two ways of setting up your chart. Um, permit, permit me to delete this. Permit me to delete this. I believe we have taken this one down or probably we'll go over it in the recorded video. Okay, so uh, delete. Okay. All right, we use divergence to spot reversals. Divergence, we use it to spot reversals. So take for instance, this is the GBP. And let me, um, I must say that the, GB, uh, the divergence tool can work on any time frame. On any time frame, on any time frame. If you can spot it on the weekly time frame, oh, that's very good because it's going to play out for a long period of time. For a long period of time. Um, how do you overlay your chart? How do you overlay your chart? Once you open your trading view chart, lay up like this. Um, maybe you want to start with um, any of the two, any of the correlated assets. Maybe you want to look at the EU and the GU, or you want to look at the AU, AUDUSD, and the MCD USD or you want to compare the um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, or you want to compare the indices, anyone here, any set um, that you are looking at, open the charts for one of them like this. Now I have GPU as a chart right in front of me, the weekly time frame. I need to overlay the Euro USD on its Y because that's its, that is its correlating asset. So 
you look at this symbol here. Can we see this? Can we see my, my cursor? Can we see where I'm pointing at? Please quickly reply so that I can move on. Can we see where I'm pointing at? Can we see where I am pointing at? Okay. So once you click on this compare, click on it, you can see it will bring you this compare symbol. Then you can search for the correlating assets you want to overlay. Now we want to overlay Euro USD. So Euro USD. Okay. Um, we want to do it with the FXCM. FXCM. Once you toggle your cursor on it, it will give you some options. Okay. You're going to see new price scale and you're going to see new pain. Can we see that? New price scale, new pain. Are we seeing that? Are we seeing my, my, my cursor? Are we seeing that? Okay, so now when you are selecting new price scale, this is how it will look like. Okay. And then you would change your, your primary um, asset view. You change both of them to line chart. To change to a line chart, beside your time frames here, you will see this arrow here where you have candles, you have bars, you have lines and all. You can just click on the start to add just two to your favorite candles. If I add, bars now to my favorite i'm going to have three here so for easy access just uh, mark them to be your favorite your candles and your line so you change this one to your line chart okay okay i will follow you please so i guess we can just work with this if you are using a new page so let let me show us if you're using new pane how it will look like. If you click on the new pane, what you're going to see is that a new window will be created like this. Okay. I will follow in. Please drop some eight if you are following me. Please drop some eight if you are following me so that we can quickly wrap up. Okay, so now when you look at this now, I have my new pane. I have um, overlaying it. So let's just choose overlaying. Let's just choose overlay. Uh, let's just choose overlay. Let's just choose overlay. So now we can overlay. I want you to study something here. Just look at your market structure here. You know, we said that divergence is very, very good when you have your uh, uh, your trending market, you have been able to identify your trending market. Okay, this is this market structure. So you have a lower high, you have a lower low, you have a lower high, you have your what? You have a lower low. Now, what do we call all of this? That is a retracement, right? I will follow me. If you can get just this on this time frame. I think I've, I've been able to do justice to that. You just apply to any other time frame. So you have your lower low, you have a lower low. After a new low is formed, we are expect the retracement to go lower. And if it is for uh, a, a bullish market after a new high risk, okay, don't forget a divergence is easily spotted when you have a pullback that is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. So now, just if you can spot the divergence on this chart let me know drop some fives if you can spot the divergence on this chart okay so here we have it here we have it here we have it can you see it Yeah, so this is the major structure here. This pullback comes to an end with this divergence. 
it's almost like with this divergence, we have come to the end of the whole graph. So you could see how this guy just dropped. That so this is the EU chart that we overlaid. Look at at this point in time, GU made a higher hand, EU made a lower hand, and this is the sign of weakness. Please, which of them sold the most? Which of the two sold the most? Before we can see, which of them sold the most? EU sold the most. You can see that. This sign of weakness here, this was the guy smart money was selling much more heavily, much more heavily. Okay, so, uh, so that's that about that. Uh, quickly, can somebody tell me what you can see currently, currently on this chart? Can you see anything currently on this chart? Can you see anything currently? What can you see current, current, anybody? Anybody? After this example, I will pick just one more example. What can you see currently? I'm not even talking about what has happened in the past. I'm saying currently now, what can you see? What can we see? What can we see? Well, this is not a trade idea, but we are educating ourselves. What can you see? What is this? What is this? Anybody, what is this? So GU is failing to create a lower low. What does that mean? What does that mean? Is that a sign of strength or a sign of weakness? Is that a sign of weakness or a sign of strength? Quickly, I think I have like 10 minutes now. <laughs> I think I have like 10 minutes now. Sign of strength. It is very soon we should be waiting for smart money to now position themselves, meaning that if you go to a time frame lower, if you go to a time frame lower, you are going to see something. So, yeah. Please, do we understand what this short, short presentation so far? Sign of strength, sign of weakness. Do we understand so far? Yes. As a matter of fact, if you go to your four hours time frame, you can see that they already gave you your, they already gave you your break of structure there. Can you see how this is so powerful? This is so powerful. And the higher the time frame you spot this thing, the longer the move. The longer the move. Imagine short and GU since past three months or past four, five months. Are we together, please? Okay, let me call my example. Let me call my example. Um, this was in uh, let's pick one example in this is in this is in this is uh, let's pick one example. Let's go on to US 30. So I want to pick US 30 chart and go to the weekly time frame. Don't forget you can spot your divergence on any time frame, on any time frame on any time frame. It's just that the higher the time frame, the, the longer that move. Okay. So now this is Dow Jones US 30. I want to overlay the other two indices, which is the US 500 and the US 100. Okay. I believe by now we all know how to overlay charts. If you want to move your charts, 
Now, one thing you will notice is that, that after overlaying your chart, you will see three different um, um, separate price when the price lines one, and you see it will be colored, different colors. So if you want to move your this blue now, okay, you see you can, you can you see the price window that is moving a little. Now, when you look at this orange, it's not moving because you will need to go to the window, the price window belonging to it. You take your cursor there and then you just compress it, and then you can put your hair and move it. Okay, then over here, compress this. Um, when you watch this video, video over and over, you understand. You understand. Okay, can anybody tell me what you can see? Tell me what you can see, please. What can you see? What can you see again? Anybody? Anybody? Quickly, quickly. We are wrapping this up already. We are wrapping this up already. What can you see? What can you see here? 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 What can we see here? Sign of weakness. This is a diversion. This shows that this all this move has come to an end here. Okay, it began to drop heavy, heavy. Let's go into the daily time frame. Exactly, 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 exactly. Let's go on. Let's go on. Um, over here, I remember this trade very, very well. I remember this trade very well. It was US 30 that I, that was in April. This trade was in April. This trade was in April. And this was it. This was it. Can you see it? This trade was from April and it sold for three months, guys. It sold for three months. What can we see here? I remember taking this trade using the one minute time frame. <laughs> Coach can still remember the sign of weakness. This was a trade, one minute time frame. Bam, this guy started selling all the way from April and it sold for three months, three months. This tool is powerful. You can check it on any time frame. Even this buy, this current buy, I remember the, we were looking at it on the four hour time frame and we saw a bullish, a sign of strength, like a bullish divergence. So, sign of strength is bullish divergence, sign of weakness is bearish divergence. Um, I believe where we are getting to now, it's okay for us to wrap up the class. So we have been able to discuss, I've been able to discuss sign of strength and sign of weakness and how to also overlay our charts whenever we are comparing correlated assets. And we've been able to also um, streamline the use of divergence to um, especially the end of pullbacks or the beginning of the pullback. But most often, uh, most of the times it's easily spotted using the uh, when you are considering the end of pullback. So, um, yes, does anybody have a question? 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 Okay, so um, let me show us a live example. And I'll wrap it up with that. A live example. Mind you, you know, we said you cannot just trade divergence in isolation. You don't just trade divergence in isolation. You have to trade it based on um, um, your, your current market structure. Okay, so quickly, let me just wrap this up using this. We know that this is our current range. Uh, this is our current range, lower high, lower low, right? So uh, this is our current range here. Now, it means that all of this is a pullback. This is a pullback. So this pullback comes to an end if we can spot a divergence. 
at the end of the toolbar. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my other window so that we can see. So at the end of this toolbar, this is what um, happened. This is what happened. Uh, okay, it's loading. Just give me two more minutes, please. Just two more minutes. I know we may not be able to get this in one class, but just take some of the um, points, just take them home and study these things, sit down with them. You don't just get it because you attended the class. You get it by giving due diligence to your own personal story. To your own personal story. Okay. So what can you see, anybody? What can you see? Oh, I've <laughs> done it. <laughs> what can we see? You have the US 30 in blue. You have the US 100 in red. You have the US 500 in green. What can we notice? What can we see? It's my brother that is replying. I want someone else to reply. What can we see? What can we see? Sign of weakness. No, US 100 is in the middle. Is the one showing sign of weakness because it's the one that is failing to create a higher high. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, going into next week, what do we expect? What do we expect from? What do we expect? What do we expect from, from the US 100? What do we expect? Now that we know that this is a sign of weakness, so it means I just need to go and analyze just this NASDAQ and check. So let me go on to NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is what US 100. I'm done, please. I just want this, this one to so This is a live application of what we are doing. So, yeah, this is a live application. Okay, so this is the US 100. Okay, right. This is yes, already is our current trading range on the daily time frame. Okay. I believe for those of us that were um that were here at the beginning of the class, you will see when our coach was analyzing this trade. Okay, so this is <laughs> Sorry, coach. <laughs> okay, so if you have any other question, you can just ask. Uh, there will be a time there will be for question and answers. For question and answers. So um, we could see that this guy is showing sign of weakness. So we can expect several things. So um, thank you for having me tonight. Thank you, coach. I'm sorry for taking your time. Sorry for taking our time so much. Um, these things that have just gone so quickly, I, I know we may not be able to get it just in one sitting. Just, let's just sit down with it, study it again, sit down with our chat and pick all those things that we have learned. This time we are going to understand them. Thank you very much. I'm going to be putting the whole to it here. Let me stop sharing my screen. So that I can pass it on to my coach. Thank you very much. I'm going to make coach the first now. Thank you, sir. Good. I'm going to be here. All right. All right, guys. I believe that was a warm, that was a very educative section. Right. So before we leave, let me also show you something. Like you said, do not trade in isolation, multiple, multiple convergence. Right. Now, looking at Euro USD. 
right? You can see this on Udo USD, how all of these buys happened. Now, let me show you something about divergence now. Look at the euro divergence. This is euro bond yields. This is euro. Let me open the euro bond yields. Okay. Now, this is the five year bond yields. You can see how this made, uh, made an I. The ten, five year bond yield made an I. The 10 year bond yield made an I. But look at what happened. The 30 year made a low. And you can see that was what sponsored the, the, the Euro USD push. <laughs> Said we got an energy. So, guys, I believe so much value has been shared tonight. Thank you for joining. I'm happy. I'm grateful for every single person. The recording will be dropped on the